was wondering, well, when is somebody going to give me a super chat? <laughs> so, Pokey, yeah, you're, you are near and dear to my heart. You will go down in the, the history of this show as the first person who's done that. So very much appreciate you doing that. All the more reason I'd like to make sure I really helped you and gave you some value. So if you're still with me and with us, I should say, can you let me know if that advice was helpful? You mentioned it to a larger audience. I'd be interested in knowing what's the largest audience you've spoken to. Because I know even with myself, as much as I do speaking, sometimes it's several years between times when I've spoken to a group of more than a thousand. <clears throat> so I've noticed even with me, as often as I speak, sometimes I get up in front of a thousand and there is a little tingle. Sometimes there's like a, a tightness in my ear that I actually feel. Now, I hope I don't convey that. I certainly don't talk about it. But you can get a physical reaction that makes you more nervous. Evolutionary biologists believe this is a defense mechanism because in prehistoric times, if you're in the savanna and all of a sudden you are up and visible from every every direction for miles, it's easier for saber-toothed tigers to see you, other predators, other tribes that could perceive you as an enemy. You're vulnerable and easily attacked. Your life could be at stake. So from an evolutionary biological standpoint, it's actually a good thing that you feel nervous if you can all of a sudden be seen by a lot of people. And that's why evolutionary biologists believe that we are programmed to have adrenaline pulsating throughout our body so we can run away, so we can get out of here, so we can get traction in the sand and in the dirt. That's why we have moisture coming out of our hands and our body and our feet. So it makes absolute sense. Unfortunately, it doesn't help us in the modern world. Because if we do all of a sudden have to give a new business pitch to 20 prospects, we can't run out of the room and still expect to get the business. Mm -hmm. We're just going to get you know, laughter or maybe maybe some sympathy, but that's not what we're after. So, uh, Boki, if you are still with us, again, thank you for your kindness and your generosity. And also, I would like to know, was that helpful? Have you tried that? Okay. Barb has also commented that she's, you know, she's on the YouTube. Oh, streaming on your YouTube channel. Fantastic. Oh, you're busy with other streams. So taking care of other things. So Barb, thank you so much. Always appreciate your help and your knowledge, your friendship and your expertise. TJ, that's not yeah. what I said. Oh, what? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I will join you whenever you're ready. I've been taking care of group members. Okay. I missed. <laughs> oh, I will join you. It's the next yeah. sentence. Got it. Yeah, I have. Um, be, it's been a rough Monday morning so far. I've been dealing with lots of robots. So I, it takes a while to clean that up. But yes. one of the features of StreamYard is that you not only can you stream to multi de destinations, if your guest in in the studio is um, a StreamYard customer as well. They can stream to theirs. Oh. And you know, so I've wondered about that because I I do get requests to do podcast interviews with people and interviews on their YouTube channel. And I, I would really like to do it, I think, the way Gary Vaynerchuk does, which he says, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> But I got to be able to capture it on my end too, right. so I can use it for my channel. So you're so you're saying they have to be a Streamyard user in order to do that, right? Okay. And they have to be re registered. They that can be a free thing. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to uh, have a paid account, but they have to be registered with Streamyard. So that's okay. you know, it's got to be authenticated. So. Now let's say they wanted to interview me for their YouTube channel, just on their YouTube channel. Could I then add their channel with their permission to my StreamYard account just for that day 
so that I could be going live to my audience, but they could be interviewing me and doing anything they want. If it's a straightforward talk interview without graphics and stuff, could they then interview me and it be pushed out on their channel? Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I haven't had quite enough coffee, but the short answer would be yes. But there are, you know, you get, it's not for the novice. And I wouldn't want you to do that right now. <laughs> I don't have any immediate plans to. <laughs> it, it does take just a wee bit of training. We yeah. as, you know, because um, you're one of my partners on my channel, you have the ability to approve or disprove of a, a guest to stream uh, to add to their stream if they have mm -hmm. a Streamyard authenticated account. Mm -hmm. If you're bringing something into Streamyard, that's going to be done from a screen share. If they do not have a Streamyard account, mm -hmm. and then you've got sound issues to be concerned a about, <laughs> you know, and if uh, so, I would be very cautious in what kind yeah. of arrangements I made. But it is possible. The short story is, it's possible. And speaking of sound, I think you were correct, Barb. What was causing problems for me, for some reason it was doing it with StreamYard and not Zoom and others, but as you correctly pointed out, the problem did not appear to be StreamYard. The problem appeared to be, and let me just show people what I was doing. And I've got to walk away for one second. Apologies. But what was happening is I was I was not wanting to use the, the corded headphones, earpieces that I normally use, because with the different camera angles, you know, me over here wanting to demonstrate. I was afraid with this, if there's a cable behind me, all of a sudden I'd be tripping and I would be falling over. And that might be good for views, but it would not be good for me. <laughs> it would be a little embarrassing. So I specifically wanted wireless headphone, or oh, I wanted a way of hearing you or any other guest without it just coming out of a speaker. Because now when you speak through no fault of your own, it's coming through a speaker. I'm hearing you, but those sound waves are also traveling to this microphone and it creates a feedback. I know you know, but for others. So that's why I was wearing these headphones. And I'm intent I don't even want to open it because it might automatically connect and throw it off. And thanks to your research, you pointed out this this may use the having something else on Bluetooth can mess up the connection with the cameras and the stream yard because we had a number of problems a couple of weeks ago or really just a week and a half ago where we would be doing a live stream. I'd have these earpieces on and all of a sudden the camera would freeze and everything was had to come to a screeching halt. I would have to restart it. So what I think the solution is, is I'm going to get a different type of earbud that has its own receiver plug-in that I will just plug right in to my computer. And I don't know technically if that's its own Bluetooth, but it's not the main computer Bluetooth. So it should not cause the same problem. What I like about these earbuds is they're this, basically the same color as my skin. And I have it in just one ear. And I could twist it. It was round. So I prefer it much, you know, much more than the the AirPods that Apple puts out. The AirPod is a higher quality piece of machinery and its microphone is much better. But I like the way this blocks the hearing. I have a couple of sets of these. I use this on a daily basis for listening to my ultimize affirmations, listening to my my meditation. Uh, self-guided meditation. So I do like these for that reason, but I certainly don't want to destroy the stream because as you may remember a week and a half ago, we would be plugging along, everything's going well, and all of a sudden there's just a freeze frame of me, which did not do any good for anyone. So I appreciate your help there, Barb. Now, is there any any other top issues that you think need to be addressed today while we have you, Barb? 
so many news stories I see on a daily basis now all sort of reaffirm some trends I see that I think are so important to people in our community as it relates to the demise of traditional media, traditional advertising, and therefore more opportunities for people like you and me and others who are, are not on the payroll of gigantic TV studios and TV networks to reach people, communicate with people, help people, and yes, make money too. Not only from advertising, but as our extraordinarily generous friend, Pokey has did, which is actually give me a super chat again. Thank you. Pokey, I see you've come back and apologies if I missed that. Pokey says, <laughs> thanks a lot. And I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Thanks a lot. The tips you gave were helpful and I will soon start working on it and let you know on my progress. The largest audience I deal with is 50 people, which feels a lot. Well, 50 people is a lot of people if you are used to speaking to one or two or three people. I mean, if you're typically used to speaking to no more than five people, then this is what, a thousand percent more? It's a much higher percentage more. So it's only natural to feel uncomfortable. But try to do it regularly. Right now, you know, in any given day on YouTube, I'm not a YouTube superstar, obviously. I'm not Mr. Beast. I'm not a Sean Cannell for that matter. But I do speak typically to about 5,000 people a day on social media who see me collectively on my various videos and these and different platforms. And that's something if I had to walk out on a stage in front of 5,000 people every day, uh, well, I won't kid you, I would enjoy it. But the first handful of times, I'd probably be a little uncomfortable. So the more you do any of this, the easier it gets, the more comfortable it gets, the harder it gets to be uncomfortable, which means you're not going to be as tempted to stutter or stammer. Again, clarification, I'm not an expert on people who have been officially diagnosed as having a stuttering problem in everyday life. I'm just giving advice to people where it seems to come up and as in Pokey's case, where it's when you're speaking outside of your comfort zone to larger groups. Pokey also says, it's great to be the first super chat, metal, yellow, first, red. I have been finding your work on YouTube very valuable, and I wanted to share a small contribution to your channel. Well, Pokey, you, you really do warm my heart. And it, it is an opportunity to not beg people for more money, but as an, as an incentive to all of you thinking about, maybe I should do this to realize YouTube is working hard to try to create ways for creators to make money, to make a living. There are some people who never have an audience big enough to make more than $50 a month on advertising revenue. Their subject matter doesn't really lend itself to them making online courses, but they develop real fans and strong fans who want to support them. And they do it through super chats. They do it through memberships. It, it's not something I have spent a lot of time focusing on in the past, but it is something I'm going to spend some time on in the next year to build a stronger foundation for this show. So I do want people to realize the days are going, you may say, I don't ever want to you know, shill for products the way TJ does and Amazon influencers. I don't ever want to have to take a meeting with Coca-Cola to get their blessing. I just want to share my craft, whether it's painting, whatever it is. And if my own fans can support me as Pokey did with a super chat or with a membership or a Patreon, that can be a fantastic business model for a lot of creators. So that is something I do want to talk about more and more in the coming weeks and the coming months. So Pokey, again, thank you so much for your, your kindness and your generosity. I want to uh, say hello to Angela who stopped in to say hello. Angela says, just finished your course on Coursera. It had a great impact on me and I feel much more comfortable in public speaking. So thank you very much. I do have one question though. 
what do I do if I don't have time to practice my presentation beforehand? Example, I have to take over a presentation from a colleague. Do I just wing it? So I, I look, I live in the real world. I know you're in the real world and especially corporate executives, you're maybe busy flying around. You've got a colleague who just says, I got to give a presentation in an hour on Zoom and my kid just got sick. I got to take him to the hospital. You got to fill in for me. And it happens in an hour. I realize you can't stop everything, get in a time machine, go back and practice for two days. I do realize that. What I would recommend is you at least practice the first 60 seconds. Make sure you have a strong opening. And I don't mean it, it's got to be funny. You don't have to tell a joke. It doesn't have to be wildly provocative. But if you could just deliver one idea that's interesting, useful, memorable to that audience in the first minute, you're so far ahead of the game because most speakers, most presenters are boring and they give people an opportunity to tune out. Okay, today, everyone, thanks so much. You know, I, I didn't think I was going to give this presentation today, but my colleague Barb called in sick and I'm doing this and I apologize because I didn't really have enough time to repair, but we're just going to kind of go through this. Okay, blah, 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 blah. What did I just do there? I practically begged everyone to pick up their cell phone, check text, check email, check social media, and ignore me. That's what I just did. So whatever you do, please don't do that. Don't make excuses. Don't complain. No one cares about your internal workflow schedule or politics or any of that. So always remember your audience is there. And they just want some idea from you, whether you had a year to prepare for this speech or you had two minutes. Do the best you can. If you do have to prepare for a colleague or step in for a colleague at the last minute, and let's say they've given you a whole slide deck, I would ask them beforehand. Ideally, you can still talk to them, even if they're in a taxi on the way to the hospital. Apologies if that seems crass, but if you've got a few minutes to talk to them, ask them, say, hey, what do we really want to accomplish from this presentation? And then what is it we think is going to resonate the most with this audience? Because quite often someone does know the answer to those questions and it's not in the written speech or the PowerPoint deck that they've given you. If they tell you what it is, you can at least start the presentation that way. Email people the whole deck. Try to turn it into a question and answer session. Be as helpful as possible. And then, you know, maybe you get to some of the, of the slides. Maybe you don't, but you've still created real value. So I think that is really the best way to go in that situation. And do realize that there's always some time. You know, I stress this with my media training clients. If you have a, a TV reporter could call you or a newspaper reporter could call you and say, I've got to ask you about this. And you say, well, what's your deadline? I'll get back to you. And they say, my deadline is right now. You can always say, hang on. I'll be with you in two minutes. Stop, think, write a couple of notes down. Think of one idea. Pick up the phone in two minutes. So there's always some time to, in fact, collect your thoughts. So please keep that in mind. Okay, I see uh, TikTok has joined us. We'll, we'll, or Tick Tick has joined us in the room. We'll come to you in just a moment. And I see that. So I want to make sure, Angela, that I... Uh, you asked about just winging it. If you mean by winging it that you're asked to sp speak on behalf of your company to pitch a new client and you've done it a million times and you know a little bit about the client and you're very comfortable talking about why people should want to hire you and you have certain stories and examples and you are not following the exact structure of what your colleague created. Sure. That's fine. By winging it, meaning, Wow, I don't even know the topic here. I don't know who I'm talking to. Let me just make up stuff. No, don't do that. 
you need a plan. Now, quite often, the, the most effective way is to have a simple outline. Five bullet points. One, two, three words at most to really help you focus on what you want to say. So you're not reading a script. You haven't memorized it. You're not simply going through bullet points. It's not structured that way. But you thought about the big picture. The big picture is what is it I want this audience to do after speaking to them? What are, in fact, the core messages that are most important to them and me that I really want them to get? What stories and examples can I share to make those come alive? If you do that, you have a lot of wiggle room to do it in different ways, and you will still be wildly successful as a communicator, much more effective than if you're just going through a whole bunch of bullet points that a colleague prepared, because they might not know anything about how to give presentations successfully. They may just be doing it what most people do, which is an incredibly boring data dump. Realize if you stand up to speak, it's your presentation. You own it. You can't simply say, well, I was called in at the last minute and blah, blah, blah. This isn't my year. People like to make all those excuses. Guess what? Nobody cares. If you're speaking, the good news is you get all the credit if it's a great presentation. The bad news is if you give a boring data dump and everyone ignores you and they pick up their phone and they start checking email. Oh, that's interesting. I'm looking at this. You get all the blame. So really, at some point, you've got to personalize it to make it as good as you possibly can. Will it be as good if you have five minutes to prepare versus five days? Probably not. All you can do is the best you can do. Okay. So let's switch back to Moki, who says, I have to go for now, but, but looking hands yellow, heart red forward to join your stream lab next time. StreamYard, thank you so much. And, and Moki, really do appreciate your, your act of kindness and generosity. And I am glad that you're getting value from this. And please let me know whether you're joining us live or you just post a comment in the community tab or on any one of the videos. I do read every comment. And a lot of the, a lot of the videos that I do on this channel are directly in response to people like you posting a specific question. So if there's something you want me to go in more depth on, please. All you have to do is let me know. Thanks so much. We've had a few more comments coming in. I want to make sure I didn't miss anyone. And Barb is thanking everyone and appreciate that. I want to make sure I didn't miss any relevant. Okay, so uh, Tick Tick, do you want to join us on stage? Because you're in the green room. And Tick Tick has also posted a video. I'll add you if you want to. And then I am going to hit share. Uh, Tick is one of our regular students who is, frankly, top 1% of his class when it comes to speaking skills. Well, why is that? Is he naturally gifted? Is he a born genius? I don't know. Maybe he is, but that's not why he's in the 1% around here. He's in the 1% because he takes every opportunity to speak, to record himself on video, to get critiques from me and others. So... That's why let's take him and see he's posted a couple of other comments, but let's go ahead and I'm going to share the screen. And we're going to do a link to his video. I'm going to share the audio. I'm going to do entire screen. I hope to get the correct screen. I'm going to share the audio system audio again. I hit share. And now I'm going to. What is the reason everyone is telling you to read books? What is the reason everyone tells you that read books, reading books make you leaders? What is the reason behind this? So in this video, I will address this point. Books are the best friends we can have. Books do not criticize nor they enforce their ideas on you 
books are always patient books listen to our voices books give ourselves time space and energy we must understand to read books we must make ourselves compatible with the habit of reading reading books is very important and we must read books to improve our knowledge we must read books to increase our understanding we must read books to increase our perspective because book reading is very very essential okay so, so a lot of let me sorry about that let me get that okay so now i hope i've stopped sharing Co so tick tick I continue to see progress with what you're doing. Very, and if you want to come on screen, you can, but you don't have to, obviously. I, I like your energy. I like the volume. I like the enthusiasm you're bringing to this. And I'm seeing it in your face and your voice. Increased confidence. And Barb, if you want to weigh in on any of this, I'd love to get your opinion as well, if you have time to join us. So I'm loving all of it. And I frankly love your message. I'm a big fan of books. Now, I have to be careful about saying this sometimes because I'm sort of biting the hand that feeds me. But my primary mode of learning is reading books. It's not watching video or listening to audio. It's not listening to podcasts. I, I like to read books every day. So your message does really resonate with me. Here's where I think you would be even better. I would like, I would have loved for you to start it off by talking about one specific book, one specific author, one specific message you read in a book, you then applied it to your life and it helped you. Talking about that would be infinitely more powerful because I can see it here and say, you know, I, you know, trust me, I've read a million books on public speaking, and that's why you should listen to me. I could say that, but if it's left like that, it's generic. Part of the value I provide to you is I've read a gazillion books on public speaking, so I've gathered a lot of data. And I'll never forget, once 30 years ago, I read Lillian Wilder's book on how to stop saying ah uh, and um, and she said, that she would type up the word uh and um, cut it out, put a red international red no sign on it, and then tape it on her client's watches. And lo and behold, they would stop saying um. And I thought, that's a great idea. So I started doing the same, and then I took it to the next level. I actually went to a printing shop and had these printed up as stickers. And to this day, I pull off a sticker of don't say um and don't say uh, and I put it on my clients' cell phones on the front, their watches, and their computers. Okay, so what did I just do there? I talked about why books are important, and I like to talk about books, but then I took it down to a concrete example. I talked about one book, one author, one example. I learned what I did with it. That is what will make you much more powerful. So, Tick, if you want to respond to that, I'd love to hear. Again, I, I love the fact that you're recording videos frequently. Barb, did you have anything you wanted to add there? Tick actually responded in the inside uh, internal messages saying that the, the book had an interesting quote, there are many ways to, m there are many ways to God as grains of sand. And I just wanted to point out that when you're guests on different platforms, your your quotes can't be shared, no matter what the application is, to um, your commentary can't be shared easily. So, and I'm not sure where Tick is coming in from, but if he can post those kinds of things in the uh, public chat on YouTube in particular, is one of the best ones. Even we couldn't see LinkedIn. LinkedIn doesn't allow to bring the comments in mm -hmm. to as well, so we couldn't see what and Angelica had responded here. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I uh, as far as books go these days, 
I think it's been five years that I've really read a hardbound book, uh, paper book, um, from beginning to end. I prefer to get my books on Amazon and do that with the Kindle reader because as we age, we can increase the type and all of that, you know, uh, and it's actually a much more immersive experience because many of the authors have produced Kindle books where they can provide more detail and links out to different resources they mention. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of a this century book lover, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> from, but I've, I've read books since childhood and I'm an avid book reader, but I think, you know, it's, it's kind of the word trite. You know what that is? <laughs> it's like it's the old way of doing everything. It's just like over and over we hear that. Even public speakers will grab on to that. You know, you got to have because that's one of their marketing tools. Mm. And if they're with you in person, they got to have a hard copy to be swinging at you. However, some of the new century speakers are swinging their Kindles. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and I think it'd be, you know, behoove them, depending on what their audience is, you know, to yeah. have the various forms that their books are available on, examples of yeah. them to share. Mm-hmm. But definitely. Great, great points, Barb. And, I, you know, I've sort of been all over the map on book formats because f- for years and years and years, I only read real books, hardback and paper book. And then I switched to all digital. I said, oh, I don't want to mess up the environment. Let me be modern and hip and clear out my house and create room, not have not have dust. Made. I went to all digital. And then in the part of my research on how to get better sleep, I said, oh, I'm going to go back to physical books. So about five years ago, I went to all physical books again and often would read two books a week. And then only recently, in the last couple of months, I've switched back to digital. The reason being the technology of the Amazon Paperwhite, I found so effective because you mentioned, yes, it can make font larger, which I've got to use glasses regardless of how big the font is, if I'm reading typically or contacts as I have now. But what I love about the Amazon Paperwhite is I can turn the the brightness down. It's like, I think it's one to... 20 scale. I turn it to six and it's still bright enough for me to read without any other light in the room. And yet it's, it's not keeping me awake and causing the stimulation that a cell phone light would do. So I love it. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night. I can't sleep. If I read on the paper white, sometimes for even 15 minutes, I fall right back asleep. If I try to do that on a on a, a, a typical uh, larger form tablet or on my on my um, Apple tablet, I'm, I'm awake all night. It's so bright. Plus, it's connected to every email and text and everything else. I love the paper white because I'm not connected to anything else. And the font, I can make the font any size, but I can make it so dim. It's practically lulling me to sleep. In fact, I was reading it last night before to bed. I think I was so tired, I only read for three minutes. So that's something people may want to consider. I do want to give Tick a little more guidance and be responsive to him. So you're saying, because I'd asked you for more clarification, you you wanted to suggest a book, Morals of the Heart by Dr. Bruce Lawrence. I'm not familiar with that book. You said the book had an interesting quote. There are many as there are many ways to God as grains of sand. So what made that interesting to you? Again, my, my number one suggestion for you of how to improve your video is talk about something that changed your life and tell us exactly what happened, why it was meaningful. So if you want to share that. Let me see what you posted next. You said the only prescription for morality is this. Remember that every woman could have been your mother. Every girl could be your daughter. Remember that every man could have been your father. Every boy could be your son. When it comes to matters of the heart, that's all that needs to be kept in mind. Always 
at all times. There are a few things I love. It's a book beyond your imagination. It's beyond fiction and nonfiction. It's an excellent book you'll love and have peace at heart. Well, uh, Dr. Bruce Lawrence would be happy to hear that. You may want to consider posting that as a review on the Amazon page. I'm sure the author would appreciate that. Now, I think, Dick, you're in India, and I don't believe India has the Amazon Influencer Program, but at some point, if it opens up in your country or similar countries, there's nothing wrong with you trying to help someone else and, your, and help yourself. So make a video saying good things about the book and become an affiliate advertiser. I'm not saying everything has to be reduced to commerce, but you like to speak. You're looking for more opportunities, reach more people. You could write a, you could speak what you just put in text there, review the book, help the author sell more, and you could make some money. And I don't know enough about where you're located to know where you can be an affiliate, whether it's something the equivalent of Amazon or Walmart or Target in your country that would allow you to do that. But you might want to look into it because you obviously are very passionate about that book in particular and books in general. I would still ask you to go a little bit deeper because again, everyone has heard, you know, you know, every, every religion has something to the extent of, you know, love, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself, whether you're saying love a stranger the way you would your sister or brother, it, it's kind of similar. As far as I know, every religion has something similar to that, the golden rule. I want to know, why did reading it here make it more meaningful? Were you about, again, I don't know much about you and I, I don't want to presume, but did you have somebody on the playground or at school or someplace in your life where you saw them as different, different culture and you didn't want to deal with them and you read this book and it made you realize, oh, this person could be my brother. Let me go up and talk to them. If you could get to that level, it would be much more meaningful, it would have a much stronger impact. So that's what I want you to think about will we'll strengthen your speaking. And that's what I try to do by talking about not just I've read a thousand public speaking books and I'm so smart, you should listen to me. I, I talked in general for about five seconds that I've read a lot of books. But then I went just to this specific of one book, one tip in a book. But then how I took that tip modified it a little and then used it on clients putting these little stickers up. and I know I've said I've shown you before I'll show it to you right now I do want to drive this point home I have to step over here I'm stepping a little away from the microphone just a moment but to tie that whole story together I do want you to realize I'm not just making this stuff up. So here, here in fact are the stickers. Now I've got to do this with my face not being seen. So let me do it like that. You can see that it has a, uh, um, and this one has like and er. And these, again, you can see one of them. Well, I'll show you on this one. You can see on this one, one of the stickers has been removed. I, I turned it into a sticker. I was holding that one. Okay, there you go. I may have been holding it the wrong way. So you could see that. So again, what I'm trying to do there is show you, in fact, how a particular book was really helpful to me and how I take that knowledge to help you. Tick, that's what I'm looking for is it's just not enough to say, oh, this book is a great book. And here's a, a nice lofty quote of, you know, aim for the moon and you'll at least hit the ceiling and, you know, all sorts of nice, warm, fuzzy affirmation style quotes. Some people like them. Some people say, eh, okay, I've heard it before. What they haven't heard before are the specific examples of how you change your life. Most people I meet 
have not seen the sticker, the anti, um, anti, uh, anti like sticker that I have. So people love it. They also love it because it really does solve a problem for them. That's what makes it meaningful. Now, not everybody is doing a highly specific, practical, tactile skill the way I am. So I don't want to make it sound like you have to be that problem solving and specific. But I need something real that happened in your life if you want us to believe that this book had something of a transcendent nature that you think was really useful. It would help it. Uh, Barb, thank you so much for joining us today. And by the way, I really appreciate the way people can sort of come in and pop out as they want. I'm not expecting you to be with me all three hours every day. What we're trying to do is be sort of like a, you know, not a xylophone, the, the instrument that you can track mm -hmm. full apart that makes the sound so that it's flexible to you. If you've got three hours to join me, great. If you've got 30 minutes, great. If you've got three minutes, great. If you've got 30 seconds, well, we post not one, but two short form videos every single day on YouTube and other social media platforms. So I'm trying to be as flexible as possible to help people. Because it's not about me and what I want. It's about what really works for you and what's going to be flexible for you. Okay. So take, if you're still with us and it appears you are, I yes. want you to, okay, you're here and you can just keep your voice on. And if you don't want to appear on camera, you may be doing other things, but tell me, can you go deeper the way I did? What specifically did you do differently after reading this book? Because that's, if you were going to do a review of it, that's what would have real power and impact on people. Because everything you said was sort of generic and abstract. It's not that it was a bad message. The problem is people don't visualize abstractions. They therefore don't remember them. If they don't remember them, how do they take action? Is that fair? All right, Dick, if you don't mind turning your microphone on and let me know. And you may need to think about it for a while. That's okay. And if the answer is, yeah, I don't really know yet, that's okay too. We're in this to explore and cultivate and see how we can make things better. And, Dick, and do you want to share again? I may have put you on the spot. One minute, I want to take medicine. You, I, I heard some audio, but I wasn't quite sure what you said there. And I think I may have missed a comment. I'm Switching taking back. a medicine. Oh, you're taking some medicine. Okay. Apologies for being distracting there. I'll come back. Okay. Well, feel free to come back. Now, Creative Mind has posted more Read Morals of the Heart by Dr. Lawrence Bruce. It's a very interesting book. <laughs> and will really make you feel more peace. It's a 700-year-old book. He is Creative Minds. Okay, Tick Tick is Creative Minds. Okay. <laughs> that, he's joining us from YouTube. So that's um, that, that's great, it, his contribution there. So Great. Thanks so much. Hey, Barb, if, I know you got to go, but I'm wondering if you could just give, because I think you know more about it than I do because of your your intimate knowledge and your involvement with the live streaming community and your Facebook page. Are there certain live streamers that you know of who get a significant amount or a majority of their income from not only the super chats, but their memberships and Patreon that you think would be good role models for some of our people to look at? I'm really not prepared to go into that today. Okay. Yeah, there are, um, as you know, I definitely am in in tune with the major players, and so much is happening right now. I don't know if you're aware of this, but Amazon terms are changing the affiliate terms, and that are changing here at the first of March. 
Well, I received the note from Amazon that certain terms of service change, and I I thought I read them, and I couldn't tell what had changed. Do you have any sense of what's significant that people should be aware of? I nothing. I'm willing to, to you know, the, it's all about interpretation. Of course, I'm not an attorney. Um, several of us were all cogitating over what we're reading, and I think I've. I invited you, and you are involved in the Logie Group, which mm -hmm. um, Logie is is an Amazon partner. And just this last um, Friday, we had a special guest uh, in in our Logie uh, community talking about how he had made, you know, ten times the money through the Logie representation direct versus, um, you know, the Amazon program. So I think it's, we are in another revolutionary time, if you mm -hmm. will, just like when, you know, we all got access to the World Wide Web. I mean, it's that profound because we also have the AI tool to assist us. Mm -hmm. Now, I, this, not to change your topics, but I wanted to let you know I had updated the, the top Udemy course instructors list that I, mon uh, I monitor or I keep and monitor frequently, but I had spaced it out since the end of the year. And uh, one of the things, because I knew that 2024 is a big year on YouTube, and yes, there are some updates on uh, that Google has made to YouTube that people should be watching for right now. Mm -hmm. But I grabbed their YouTube channels to see because that's you know one of the perks that you have as an instructor is you can put all your social destinations to meet you on mm -hmm. and i was amazed at who had over a hundred k subscribers and who did not you know and and there's one of them in there that's got like 384k or more you know subscribers to youtube but um I kept their numbers. I'll sh I'll share them in our our community. But okay, great, fascinating review, to look at. Yeah, because it's it is that combination of things, and so that's where we are right now. And you know me, I keep harping on this word community, and right now I'm going through the cycle with Meta again, um, and and working with a certified community manager program. And they've got, you know, tests coming up the first, of Mar the first week of March, and it just brings home about how what I am learning in there, which I'm sharing, this thing of community that Barb's been harping about all this time is more critical now than ever before. And that gets us back to conversation and communication mm -hmm. because you can't have community without communication. But communication is a two-way, at a minimum, a two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. And it is so, that's why all of the large live streamers, the um, notable live streamers are, many of them, there's like three top uh, live streaming applications, but bulk of them are with StreamYard because number one, it's about the voice and uh, two, on the video side, but three, the tool you have to share your viewers' commentary, to invite them on stage with you, all of those kinds of things. And it's really, as you found, when I'm not here with you, it's kind of hard to see some of the things come up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, which, 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 which can I share and what can I not? And, you know, all those kinds of things. So it's very difficult for a live streamer to be a solopreneur, if you will. Mm -hmm. You almost have to collaborate with other live streamers. And that action in itself, in learning about those li live streamers um, and going into the our live streaming family, so to speak, the strengths of each one, we learn from each other, is that goes clear back to the 80s, the Zig Ziglar days, you know, about the importance of networking, because networking isn't a one-way street. 
It's a two-way conversation with feedback and sharing of your information. So it's an exciting time to be around, but as far as detail, I'm, you know me, I'm a lifelong learner, and I'm going, my thing on my YouTube channel is I just want, you know, I've completed over 700 courses, and yours, what, you've got, what, a fifth of them are yours, probably. Mm -hmm. And so, and packaging that for me is my big thing and tying that into my Amazon live story. Mm -hmm. um, my, well, my Amazon influencer story and the live, because the live options on Amazon are changing too. So it's all happening here. We'll be ready to, everybody's launching on the March 1st, you know, and, and that's typically what happens online is that first quarter you're putting all your programs together then if you like Marie For Forleo, Brandon Bouchard, and Tony, uh, so many of the big names, they launch these programs that are really feeders into a much larger program that they're gonna be um, offering in the second quarter. So it's a, it's a very exciting time to, to be involved in I don't really have any more to add than that yeah. because it's a well. Busy, I would I would like time. to just add emphasis to you know one of your key points about you know, things are changing. They're changing faster than ever, and any one platform, whether it's Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, can change the rules right out of the gate or quickly blindside people. Something new to me, of course, and I do think it's prudent for people to not put all their eggs in in one basket, as you mentioned correctly and I appreciate you bringing to my notice Logie uh, it's you know a lot of people get excited about Amazon influencer I've been excited I've been making new videos but the people who have the strongest business sense are not doing just one thing they're they're part of Logie they're part of other programs because they really things change so quickly and also there's just the factor that some things just some people just work with some platforms and don't with others for whatever reason i've done really well on udemy but there are plenty of people who've done a thousand times better than i have on youtube for example mm -hmm. and as you pointed out you look at the top 10 people who are udemy instructors not a lot of them have you know, the one million five million followers on youtube it's you know they're a superstar that they have a couple hundred thousand or or three hundred thousand each platform often has a whole completely new ecosystem of stars. And there's nothing new about that. The best silent movie stars rarely ever made the transition to the talkies. The radio stars rarely, rarely made it into the movies. Movie stars rarely became TV stars. Broadcast TV stars rarely became cable TV stars. And cable TV stars rarely ever became YouTube star, and you can go on and on and on. The TikTok or, and the, the Vine stars were not the YouTube stars. Each one has new opportunity and new, it plays to different strengths and weaknesses. So for me, to the extent I've figured out anything is just make as many small bet ex, you know, experiments as possible, see what works. Gary Vaynerchuk always, he gets frustrated with people when he talks about some new platform and they say, well, you know, what if it's not around in two years? He said, but what if it is? <laughs> you get in early. And I have not always followed his advice. But if you if you cast enough experiments in different places and you consistently create something, I do believe if you're really talking about something of value to people or you can really entertain people, which that's not my thing, you can find a home on the internet in a meaningful way. And what really was not true for most of my human life is you can make a living doing this. I, I think maybe not everyone, but almost anyone who's consistently trying to create and use every platform available and do, does enough small, small born experiments and has at least some access to, access to the internet and a phone can 
make a living. Am I saying everyone is going to be Mr. Beast or Pootie Pie and make billions of dollars? No. But I do think that it, it's certainly possible to make a median income if you put in the time. <coughs> it may take five years. But if you put in the time, you can make a median income for almost anyone. And to me, that is profoundly exciting and just different about what's going on in the world. Barb, I know you've got other things to do. Any, uh, and that was a little bit of a long monologue on my part. Yeah. Anything you wanted to add to that? <laughs> no, I'm going to be paying attention, uh, stronger <coughs> attention to YouTube. I looked at, I'm, and I'm meeting with some of our my fellow students from the Udemy uh, track, and I think, I mean, because that is one topic I'm going to cover in this quarter because it only makes sense to do that, you know, from my connections, my people connections. Because <coughs> so I, I, I'm actually looking forward to uh, getting things done in that realm. And mm -hmm. also the latest research statistics from the Internet. This is the time of year, you know, I'll mention it one more time, social media marketing world. That's where all the great thought leaders in social media marketing uh, gather every year and have since 2009, uh, whether it's virtual or in person. The reports are coming out now from, you know, their feedback from that conference their findings, and they know people are going to be looking at them for actual statistics to back up what they're saying. And so the research outfits are all very strongly getting involved, you know, in releasing their information. And that's what this last, uh, I'd say the last 10 days have been pretty heavy in uh, revealing information to help us have a good is there any one big insight that you think was surprising to you or most people in the industry? Because, I mean, I have I have not followed that conference, but certainly I look at the the major trends, which are all sort of traditional media viewership going down, traditional advertising to traditional media going down. Audiences are going up for social media, Rev uh, money from brands and advertising and affiliates and Amazon influencer and brand deals and all that, that's all going up in, in terms of the pots of money that individual creators and small creators can make. We continue to see not only 200 years old newspapers go out of business. I got to be careful. I just hit my microphone. I hope that didn't sound bad. But we also see 15 year old companies like Vice and BuzzFeed and others like that go out of business because they were so dependent on one primary revenue source, which is traditional advertising. Mm -hmm. Whereas the people who seem to be really successful, like a Sean Cannell, are getting money from super chats and affiliate deals and brand deals and conferences and a gazillion revenue streams. I mean, that that's certainly a trend you and I have seen going on now for several years. Is there any other big trend that you've learned only from this conference in the last couple of weeks? The most revealing thing <coughs> from the conference for me, and because I've been online since the you know early days, and the very first thing that we all learned is you know that the email is king, that being able to contact people via email. And back in the day, you know, an email newsletter was a big deal. And because the connectivity wasn't consistent throughout the world, but if we could reach someone via email, um, that was a big deal. Um, we could convert those uh, conversations into sales for everyone. And I hated, because of the work I did online, I mean, I have 200,000 in my email backlog. <laughs> you know, so I, ha I have a... Uh, filter kind of thing that I have to go through and just clean things out. So the number one thing that I took away from that conference is that email newsletters are back in. And not only are they back in, they must be a priority. And it just so happened that as that was being revealed at the conference, I got an email newsletter from uh, one of the top uh, YouTube influencers 
and the whole newsletter infrastructure was different. I could see the light just from the way it was designed and the content. And it, the whole theme in that newsletter was one of community. Let's get together and discuss this on YouTube at this such and such date, so forth and so on. So I think it's going to be, uh, the, for many reasons, the email newsletter is going to be golden this year because the platforms are all doing, they're cha making big changes. The, the p platforms that we've all bec uh, become loyal to, both YouTube and Facebook, have more changes to come on March 1, the old unfolding stuff. Even on StreamYard, all of these third-party tools you know, if you, you have, we're going to be using RTMP to access those areas now. We won't, as far as comments. Now, go, I apologize, Barb. Can you tell people who are listening, what is RTM? RTMP? Yeah, RTMP. What is that? The real time, let's see, message protocol, I think is what it's, what it stands for. I'd have to. I'd have to look at it. I mean, it. I've I heard the term funny. before, but I'm saying is I want to know. I, I I don't know what well, all the initials are. Just Google it. You know, but I mean, no, but I, those... I, yeah, part, of my, part of my job is when conversations happen, I want it to be understandable to the vast majority of our audience. So anytime but, I hear okay. someone use a, an acronym or jargon, Do I want to put not... myself in the position of the audience and try to be helpful. So. That's why right. I'm doing that. But I, believe I can't Google you, it while I'm talking to you. <laughs> exactly. But I do believe that you as an instructor teaching people to use video mm -hmm. uh, to communicate, teaching people to be online, to uh, share their speaking skills and all of that, that you have an obligation to stay on top of that. And I, you know, from that aspect, I don't believe it's going to be a situation of coming into a conversation where you are leading that conversation, you're viewed to be the expert, and just expecting the students or the guests to be revealing that information. I think that the audience is much smarter now than we were in the last century. And it's like, so, because in the last century, if you had that book, if you could speak well, if you could deliver it in person, you were an expert whether you were or not it wasn't questioned because mm -hmm. typically if your book got published it was through a mainstream publisher that people in that century recognized as being a credible pu publisher and the whole game has changed certainly i mean when it comes to book publishing you know something i followed for a long time and i think i published my first book now more than 30 years ago mm -hmm. But certainly 35, 40 years ago, there were about 40,000 books published a year. Now it's, depending on how you count every aspect of self-publishing, there are between one and two million right. books a year. So publishing a book, if you don't have community, as you point out, Barb, in my opinion, it, it's not worthless. It's actually less it's worth less than worthless because the time you spent with all that book you could have been building a community a tribe a fan base a following and now you don't and so the vast vast majority of people who go to all the trouble to publish a book it, it it's just a big time suck for them and it's nothing having a book these days is like having a business no, card the what, yeah the everybody has can get a business card anyone can publish a book you can't get a book that's read, though. That's what's different. Hold on. Hold on. I've got to come back to that because mm -hmm. I have helped other self-publishers, and I basically, I didn't do it for myself, but they followed my advice because of my years of experience and so forth because I did make my first wad of money through self-publishing, and which was a major surprise to me because I was able to publish a publication for 50 cents and sell it for all five bucks, you know, mm -hmm. and I just, and it was I a good margin that, that I didn't have that many middlemen. And so I'd go in and make a very small investment at pit printing and, and get thousands of dollars, you know, and the, it's like, what? And mm -hmm. so that's like when, when Jeff came along with Amazon, I said, Oh my God, this is going to change everything. And 
that it has. But in the public and at the core of Amazon is still the publishing business and what is selling, what is creating community, what Im- includes community is collaborating on books and that's what that 100 live streaming remember the book that we had Ross and we featured mm-hmm. on our live streams that's what it was about and all but his but I don't think we're really fundamentally at odds Barb but didn't didn't he create a live streaming community first he was in he's in the field talking to people around the world every day no he then didn't he create did a book, it didn't he he didn't create it we were all a part of it and we all yeah. started together in a beta experience experiment about conversing you know in in creating a virtual community and of course i was one of the leaders of that because i created the virtual communities with the tools we had at the time and worked with the major players and they were all transitioning as well Mm -hmm. and video audio real time play to key connect that's why podcasting Mm -hmm. had a prior you know it was really really big before the video was and now it's come back again but the podcasting that we see today also includes video Mm -hmm. and youtube is has figured that out they've got you know you can have a podcast um uh tab where they're actually giving preference to advertising your podcast Mm -hmm. But the most winning podcasts on there are community-based. That mm-hmm. means that there's being interaction all the time. And but again, people- to, to my point, though, I don't, I don't think we're in disagreement. My, my point is so many people I talk to almost every day say, I got a great idea for a book, and they want to just write the book, <clears throat> publish it, and they think they're going to get sales. What I think Ross did is he first – was live streaming and building community and talking to people and building a community of people who cared about it. Then he published a book. I'm saying that's the way to do we it. We all, so. I was there. Mm-hmm. And I was there. I'm in the first edition. And the thing is, is that mm-hmm. we all talked about it. And I said, everybody will be more credible if we work together on this. Somebody has to put, you know, the infrastructure together to make that happen. Mm-hmm. We actually created that all together. That's why he has the loyalty of the leaders within that community. So you can't mm-hmm. have a mayor in a community and get things done unless your staff supports that because they're your messengers going out to mm-hmm. the volumes in the community. Okay. So it's not just a Ross thing. But okay. Ross made a specialty out of it to actually profile and feature those people those thought leaders who did that i mean i'm offered every year he is offering barb come back add more to it and so forth and you know i Mm -hmm. have been busy helping folks like you um get get on the train as well and sometimes you get those opportunities presented to you and you don't take action in time and they go by Mm -hmm. and that's because you're not you're not focused on the personal conversational community side of it you mm-hmm. know it's just getting so all, things all done. great points bar i was simply trying to make one point that i think <laughs> is very important for people who watch this because i talk to people in real life all the time and and i've i i get very frustrated with it because i have so many people who have talents and they just want to write a book and i say okay how you know how many are on your newsletter list or email oh 10 i don't know a newsletter how many in your facebook community oh i haven't started that how many how often do you post on youtube and how many subscribers do you have oh i did a few a few years ago and i'm going to start again and in my experience if you just try to publish a book it could be the best book in the entire history of the world it's talking about nonfiction here although it's kind of applies to fiction as well. In, in 2024, if you simply write a great book and you haven't built the community you talk about, your book is guaranteed to suck massive amounts of time and money from you. That's a waste of time. And that's my frustration. Yeah. I see people want to start with that. It's not anti-publishing. I've published half a dozen books. What I'm saying is, 
It's not 1974. In 1974, Wayne Dyer could be a professor, just write a book. He's got no community. No one knows him outside of Detroit. He can go on The Tonight Show. All of a sudden, the whole world knows him. And, you know, 40 years later, he sold 200 million books. I'm saying Mm -hmm. those days are gone. Hey, Barb, I apologize. I, I think we're in agreement on most of these things. You bring in valid points. But I've got to get to today's Amazon influencer videos. So we're going to run out of time here. So, but I want to be respectful of you to, if, uh, it's like we lost you, but if you had any final comments, let me know. Okay. I'm going to shift gears a minute. Today, I am going to uh, make these videos on my own, which I do want to teach you how to, how to be flexible, how to do these. And so that you don't feel like you have to somehow be dependent on a team. So I'm going to get my tripod over here. And again, this is just a, a, a simple tripod, which I should at some point do an Amazon influencer video for this. I'm going to set up my studio, so to speak, which is really just my cell phone. I'm going to put the receiver into my cell phone. This way I can get better quality audio. I'm going to get the microphone to make sure I'm getting the correct microphone because I have some for a a different phone, my wife's phone and some for me. So I'm going to, first of all, test the microphone. I'm pushing the button and I'm looking for a green light. Ah, there it is. Okay. So the microphone appears to be working. I'm going to try to get it as close as possible to my mouth. And then, hey, Barb, I'm sorry if we lost you there for a minute because I did want to give you the final word before we switch over to Amazon. And I don't, uh, because I didn't knock you out, but I didn't know if you had to just leave or you got disconnected. So feel free to- Yeah, I did. I'm looking here because one of the things that if you're a guest in a StreamYard live like this Mm -hmm. and you need to leave and you want to cut the stream to your channel, um, the, if I'm a guest, you and I are both pretty much the same level in my account and I can't just stop the stream. I, if I remove it, I'm going to remove it from my channel when I leave the stream. So that was new, uh, a new learning point for me. And I just, I think that using the tool, learning how to use the tools, I think this particular tool makes it extra easy for people in general. And um, I'm, you know, I'm all in, I still con- continue to be all in on streaming live with audio and video. And I'm really excited about 2024. I think we got a lot going on. Great. So. I'm just setting up so I can do the Amazon influencer videos today. And I think I actually grabbed the wrong tripod. So I'm now going to be doing these by myself. Now, here's one of the things I'll I'll toss this out to you, Barb. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this generically. I won't say it's about Amazon Influencer. So I don't want anyone accusing me of violating any confidentiality. I will say when I look at all of the videos and content that I create that could be a part of an affiliate program, because I spent a lot of time analyzing it this weekend, what I found is that, you know, you've heard of the Pareto Principle and you know, the the 80-20 rule, what I found was that indeed 20% of my content wasn't getting 80% of the results. It was getting more like 95% of the results, 98%. So specifically, the short form video, the short form vertical video is getting almost all of my views for a affiliate video influencer stuff that I'm doing. So because of that, I'm going to try to 
be smarter and be flexible and double down on what's working and to stop doing things that aren't working. So as of today, and I'm looking for my remote control, so I'll be doing these on my own. And I thought that I hung it on one of my tripods. So, but that's the conclusion I made, Barb, is posting photo, because typically, as those of you know who followed me, I've been doing five pieces of content for every product. I'm doing a vertical picture, a horizontal picture, a vertical short form video, 15 seconds or less, a horizontal longer one, and a horizontal one where I sort of am more expansive and go more than a minute. What I have found is I'm just not getting views for anything other than the 15 second ones. So now I'm going to try to do a lot more products and just do the 15 seconds. If you have a reaction or a thought to that, I'd love to hear, Barb. If you could chat for a minute. I, oh, here's my remote control. I found it. Great. Do you have any thoughts on that? Do you think I'm being unwise? Because I'm now basing this on hundreds of data points. So it's not just like I did two and didn't get anything. Do you have any thoughts on whether that is a wise analysis or not? You're saying that you get the most feedback from the shorter ones. I'm saying that I'm getting like 99% of all of my views are coming from short the short verticals. I'm not getting much from anything else. But are you getting sales from that because uh Sean Kennel and you know through Think Media and um, Brian G. Johnson just had a, a YouTube video on that this very thing this weekend. That, yeah, you're getting it, but it's not. It, it Again, we're working with technology as well as people here. And and YouTube, we have to play to YouTube. We're, you know, at you being a YouTube partner and so forth, you've got to be knowledgeable of what they're up to. And yes, you look at views, but did they did they actually turn into a sale? And so well, that's here's, the way here's what here's my deduction process. I'm seeing with a number of of these items, I'm getting, you know, maybe 50, 100, several hundred views for the short form. And I'm seeing literally zero views on the horizontal, the long, and the picture. So it doesn't take a statistical genius to figure out that if there's zero views, then all of the sales have to be coming from the short form vertical. That's no, that's, that's what I'm doing. Well, that's um, those of us who've been at it a while don't agree with you. And I'm just going to say that you going live for multiple hours continuously at a time is working against you with the YouTube algorithm. Mm -hmm. So that's something you can search. Daryl Eves has come up about that. Sean Kennel. So that's a, uh, that's a, you know, five, those are, uh, Bob, that's a separate topic. I'm happy to talk about that, but, but I'm trying to figure out time. Out. I just wanted to talk to you about okay. the influencer videos and I'm not specifying Amazon. How could it be that I could have all of my views from one format zero views for the other and the sales not be coming from that one format just logically how would that even be possible Barb, i don't know if i lost you again i see you're on screen but you're off of the main one i'm sorry I'm okay. sorry i was taking care of things behind the scene um Let's see, you were saying if if I'm getting all my views from the short ones, but you also said, and perhaps I missed that key word when you said it was influencer videos. So, and what you're terming as your influencer videos, if you're talking about Amazon, YouTube also has a program now. Um, mm -hmm. And so in those videos, I mean, that is what's uh, the analysis is coming out now. You're still getting are they actually um, oh, buying from the short video? Yeah. And guess what? 
in these la- if you had been in the Logie meeting Friday, you will learn how important the photos are now. I mm-hmm. I had thought, give up on the photos. It's not a big mm-hmm. deal. Well, guess what? Amazon is actually seeking our photos to insert influencers into a new program. Mm-hmm. So they are favoring. So again, it's staying up with what Amazon is doing, what they're favoring at the time. But why so am I th- getting zero view? I've hun- at this point, I have hundreds of videos in Amazon. I'm getting Nothing close to Amazon. zero views. Right. Well, <laughs> I haven't looked at your account in a while because I've, I've uh-huh. got my own story going on sure. <laughs> dealing with that. But... Um, when you're part of what's been going what's been going on in the community the whole thing has been that you know the videos have been pulling in the views but are they pulling in the sales okay and i'm telling you now for the tenth time i have evidence i have Uh, evidence that i am getting some sales and i'm only getting views from shorts therefore it is logically an impossibility that the sales are coming from the longer form videos on that one format okay yeah. so that's working for you and if you're happy with the numbers that you've got you know keep rolling well i'm always ha- trying to improve and i'm trying to learn so i'm trying to cast experiments and then do more of what's working and do less of what's not working. So for me, for now, the longer form videos, the horizontal videos on this one platform are not working. The pictures oh. on this one platform are not working. So and that's this why one platform is Amazon. Well, yeah, I didn't Just want to say that, that because okay. they're all picky about, you know, we're not okay. supposed to talk about Amazon. <laughs> and so I'm trying to be a little cagey on that. But yes, I'm talking about Amazon. Okay. <laughs> So you're saying that you somehow got the impression that you can't talk about Amazon, just like we're talking about Amazon now, that you yes. can't mention it? Well, that you're not supposed to, to give insider information on what, uh, what is well, in the you account. You, exactly. Well, you could, construe, you could construe what I just said mm-hmm. is insider information because I am looking at my insider tab showing that I'm not personally getting sales from long form video. So that's why I wanted to be a little cagey about it. All I can I, say I'm certainly is open. I'm certainly understand the concept that there are plenty of people who do affiliate videos long form on YouTube and other platforms and are doing really well. I'm not in any way suggesting that people can't do long form videos and do really well do it with affiliate advertising. Obviously, you know, people do very well with, you know, 10 minute videos talking about mm-hmm. products. Oh, Mo says, hi, and I apologize. I, I am really going to have to do this now. Otherwise, we're going to okay. lose the whole window today. Yeah. Barb, thanks so much. We'll continue sure. the conversation. I don't have all the answers. I am trying to exper- cast as many experiments on a regular basis to try to learn and, and learn from mistakes and improve. Thanks so much, Barb. And thanks for Mo. I'm going to pull out my grab bag of products that I brought with me today. Again, these are all products that I actually use, that I've actually purchased, where I am going to do today a short form video explaining why I like them. Okay. Now I've got to see which brand this is. I did I know that I did buy these on Amazon. Okay. And I'll be able to link it up when I do it. Okay, so I'm going to go to video. I'm going to hit. Uh, I am. So I'm glad. Yeah, we framed this today so that you can see it. So I'm going to try to frame this so that we have the curtains in the backdrop. I think it's a slightly neater look than my regular studio. I'm going to try to get a right about here and I'll be able to hold it up. I'm using a remote control that came with this particular. So you have to turn this on, I believe. I'm going to do a simple test. I'll do it like this. Don't know if I've turned it on or if I need a new battery. 
Okay. I just got the flash. I love pickleball, and these balls do the trick. A lot of people I play with are very particular. They like to say, oh, that's the wrong ball. That's an inside ball. These balls, I buy them by the pack. They last as well as any other, and they get the job done. If you love pickleball, give them a try. Okay, now I can see that I went 17 seconds. I'm actually going to delete that. So what I have found is Amazon really seems to like the less than 15 seconds. So I'm going to just hit delete so I don't have to think about that one again. Okay. Now I'm going to go to camera. I love pickleball and these balls get the job done. I play every day. These are fantastic outdoor balls. If you want something that's going to be reliable and consistent, give them a try. Okay. So, in, again, what's different today from the past is I'm not going to do three different videos and two pictures. I'm just going to do one take of a short form vertical. My camera is up. And, well, you, you can see the camera right there. It is up and down. Okay. I love biking. I love the thrill of speed, but I want to be safe. The last thing I want is to crack my head. That's why I always use this helmet. It keeps me safe and makes me feel more comfortable. So again, I try to do these things in one take. And now that I'm only doing things as verticals, it just simplifies the process. We're not having to do this and this and this and go from photo to video. It's much, much faster. I realize it looks a little dirty and stained. That's because I wear it constantly. So do other members of my family. This hat protects me and keeps so much sun off of me. Keeps a lot more sun off than a baseball cap. If you're outdoors, give this a try. Really is. And, and this one is a, an aside. Sometimes I have to fight with my mother-in-law over. We have a couple in the house, but she likes this for gardening because it really does keep the sun off. Okay. This zinc stick sunscreen really does the job. I coat my nose, coat other body parts that I'm afraid might get too much sun. This zinc stick is the way to go if you want real protection. Now, interestingly, I've done this for another color, a tan color, and it has sold remarkably well for me. <laughs> I love pickleball, and this is my paddle. Now, you can see it's a little beaten up. I am tough on my paddles. This one is reliable. I use it every day. doesn't make me a pro, but it makes me have fun. This is my wife's Selkirk pickleball paddle. She loves it. We use it every single day. It's reliable. It's consistent. If you want a high quality pickleball paddle, this will work for you. So I'm already finding out that this is a this is a much more efficient way of making videos. If you're only doing one, and you're, you're not having to change everything else. It works well. I love these Adidas slip-on slippers. They are comfortable. I can use them going to the beach. 
going anywhere here in sunny Florida. If you're looking for something a little classier than certain brands, this may be the ticket for you. Now, I was trying not to mention another brand. I wear Crocs on a daily basis. I am using these as sort of my dress up shoes, which may sound ridiculous to anyone else unless you live in Florida. It's, a, it's definitely a more casual place. Okay. My 10 year old daughter is a budding artist. She does a lot of things that require glue. I love this Elmer's glue stick because it is neat. It doesn't spill around the house and it gets the job done. It sticks. Okay, so another pair of slippers. I don't think I've done these yet. <laughs> well, you'll hear about this in just a moment. And thank you for joining me. This is sort of the tail end of our session today where we do Amazon influencer. Let me get back here. Where we do Amazon influencer video. So I'm sort of taking you behind the scenes, letting you know how I actually do this, how I make it, different styles I've been experimenting with. And Mo says, hello, I've joined a little late. Did I miss something? Advice to that? Well, yes, we've been talking for three hours, Mo. So as soon as I finish, this entire thing will be available on demand. So all you have to do is hit the live tab on the channel and you'll see what we did today. Okay. I love these slippers. They're great for going to the pool, to the beach, and I wear them going out to restaurants here in Delray Beach, Florida. These are kind of my dress slippers because they look a little fancier than other certain brands. Again, I don't want to say it by name, but I'll wear these when I don't want to be seen in my Crocs because there are a lot of people who just don't like Crocs and think of it as something you should only wear in your, in your bathroom, essentially. So. That's why I have these. I love my daughter and I'm trying to encourage her to read. That's why we got her this Amazon Kindle for kids. It really is a great way of instilling the love of reading with a child at an early age. Okay. Now, here's a jacket. I can't remember if I got this on Amazon or not. So I'm actually going to take a second right now. And normally I don't do this. I'll just go ahead and do it. But we've I'm at the end of our products for today, although I may do some books. You can always do books. I'm just going to do a quick search and see if this brand is carried because if the brand is not on Amazon, you can't do an Amazon influencer video for it, which is not surprising. But what a lot of people don't know is you can do an Amazon influencer video, even if you didn't buy the product on Amazon, as long as you have the product and it's available on Amazon, you can do a video. So I see that they do have jackets. What I don't know, so the brand is on, so I'll probably figure that out later. This is the free country law, and I do use this sweat jacket on a regular basis. I'm not going to take the time to demonstrate it here, put it on. I'm simply going to hold it up. So let me go back. But at least I know the brand is on. Every once in a while, I may buy something from a Costco, and it's simply not available on Amazon, in which case it's a waste of time to make the video. Free country warm-up jacket. Okay.
I love my free country men's warm up jacket. I wear it almost every day when it's cool. I live in South Florida, so many months of the year I don't need it. But in the winter months in the morning, this is the first thing I put on. So the other advantage of doing it this way is I'm so close to it, I can see the counter, the, the timing counter. So when you are, uh, when you're having someone else do it and they're facing the, the lens and you're only seeing the, the can or that they're facing the camera screen, they see the timing and I have to look at the lens. Now, that's typically what happens when I am making these videos with my wife. Today, it's just me and a tripod. And what hadn't really occurred to me till now is the beauty of that method is I can see the timing. So if it gets close to 15 seconds, I'm trying to get the whole thing done because it does, I've seen dramatically increase your odds of success of getting views and getting placed on product pages if you have the video 15 seconds or less. Now, you don't have to do it that way. And in many ways, they encourage you to do videos 30 seconds or more because you get, you're get you more likely to be compensated if someone watched your video for 30 seconds. My understanding is that if someone watches your entire video, if it's less than 30 seconds, and then they make the purchase, you get credit for that too. So that's that's why I'm doing that. We have a few extra minutes. We started a little late today at 9.15. So we have a few extra minutes today because I do want to give you three hours. And what I am going to do is just do a few product reviews of books. Now, I'm doing that not because I think I'm going to make a lot of money by doing product reviews of books, although I have had a number of sales come in. It doesn't add up to a lot of money for my video reviews of Ali Abdal's new book that came out end of December. I think it's going to be a lot harder to make money from books that are not brand new. For example, I did a review of Atomic Habits. Well, Atomic Habits has been out for years and years and years. It's been on bestseller list for years and years and years. So nobody really needs to hear, if they're interested in improving their habits, a review from me. So that one has not been wildly successful. Let's just leave it at that. But I do think that the more videos you do, the better you get. It is an art form. The more doors that are open, maybe I do one of these for a book and it generates no sales, but the author and, or excuse me, the publisher really likes it and wants to somehow open a relationship with me, open doors with me. It may be the, the PR team that sees me making a video for one of their authors, then puts me on their radar and they want to have their authors come on this channel for podcast interviews. And it opens up a whole new line of relationships there. So that's why I'm doing this in part because, well, if it's only a 15 second investment, so there's not much to lose. So I'm just going to uh, take a couple of books that I really like and talk about these. I'll just do three right now. Try not to destroy my set in the process. And We'll do these reviews right now, and I'll show you what I'm doing. Remote control. Fall in love with the problem, not the solution, is a fantastic book. It really changed my whole perspective on being an entrepreneur. If you're at all thinking about starting a business, you owe it to yourself. Read this book. Okay. I think that really does, you've only got 12 seconds or so, does sum up exactly why someone should read that book. Now, can I remember how, it doesn't have to go in the same order, but I do want to make sure I don't make a mess of things as I put this back. Okay. All right, Martin Seligman's The Hope Circuit.
If you're a fan of positive psychology, then Martin Seligman is the guy. He's the founder of the whole movement. This talks about his whole journey. If you want to know more, you really should read it. Okay, is that the strongest review? No, I mean, he is a profoundly important thinker in the world of positive psychology. It's harder for me to be quite as effusive for the book because while his ideas are profoundly important, he's not the most engaging, interesting writer. So I don't want to oversell. I want to give people candid thoughts. Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport is an extraordinarily important book. We live in a world where all of us are just so overwhelmed with more messages. Cal gives reasons, analysis, and tactics for how to improve your life. Okay, so that's what we have. And this really is a good book. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying anything that isn't true on any of these reviews. But Cal Newport is really a savvy guy. I think I've read all of his books now. If you're looking for someone who is not, he's not some old guy who's just a curmudgeon about what's going on in the world. He really does know a tremendous amount about the state of things. And he's actually a computer science professor Georgetown University, but that's not what he's known for, at least to me. He's written all of these books about the modern digital world, how to be more efficient, how to be more productive. He's had a huge impact on me. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I try to spend no more than five and a half hours in my office a day. And I do other work other times, and I'm monitoring social media and doing other things like that and having to respond to messages at different times. But as far as really trying to be productive, he's a big thesis of the idea that humans can't really be more, can't be productive for more than about six hours a day. Yeah, you can squeeze in some email here and there after that, but you're far more productive with tremendous focus and doing one thing at a time. So I know you've heard that from other people and places, but the way he sums it up in that book is profoundly, profoundly useful, helpful, and creative. Okay, we're out of time for today because we're now way past noon. I want to thank you for your time. I'm TJ Walker. Please join us here live tomorrow, but also please come back and watch our regular videos. We post typically three produced videos a day. Please like them, subscribe, leave comments, and sign up for notifications. Thanks. See you tomorrow.